Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome to the Essential Guide to Audio Routing in Cubase. Now, getting your audio from your microphone or your guitar into Cubase and then onto the outside world is an absolutely essential requirement of any musician. And yet it can be a little bit confusing because there are multiple different ways that we can get from A to B over the course of this video series. We're going to have a look at uh, some of the primary means that we can accomplish that and hopefully clarify uh, some of the areas of possible confusion that you might have. If you enjoy this series, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Great way to help support me. Now, I don't intend this series to be a beginner's guide on how to connect hardware uh, into Cubase, but we do need to look at studio setup because this is the beginning of the journey. This is the very first step we need to take. And you want to make sure you've got this configured properly because if you leave a load of stuff visible or unnecessary or improperly labeled, it's gonna make your life so much difficult later down the line. I heartily recommend you sort this out first. So if you head into your studio setup, your hardware of choice will be configured like this. So I've got a Focusrite 18i8. Here are the 18 inputs. Here are the eight outputs. I use very little of it. I use potentially five or six inputs at most, and I use four separate outputs. And we're gonna talk about that today. You can see most importantly that I've got the show as column set up. So here is my microphone, labeled microphone. Here's my mono guitar, labeled mono guitar. I have an optional stereo guitar input on five and six. Basically go in and take the couple of minutes it takes to label all of your inputs properly in this show as column, and then mark as not visible, in other words, uncheck all of the boxes for inputs or outputs in which you have no interest. I can't overstress how important it is when dealing with routing to keep things as absolutely simple as possible. So at the moment I've got two single mono inputs, my microphone and my guitar, and we'll have a look at the outputs a little bit later. Having made sure that the hardware is properly interfaced into Cubase, we then head into audio connections, and there might be alarm bells ringing immediately because you can only see my guitar input, you can't see my microphone input. I use the control room for reasons that are more to do with me making YouTube videos. I need to be able to talk to you, I need to be able to record the feed in OBS. Those particular requirements um, are perfectly suited to the use of the control room and we're going to discuss that today. I'm gonna to use my really simple little setup here um, as an illustration of some of the various challenges that we have in routing and how you can solve them in Cubase. Just for now, let's have a look at this mono guitar in. This is a bus. Now this is um, a term borrowed from electrical power distribution systems a bus or a bus bar um, in that sense is basically literally a huge iron bar or huge metal bar uh, through which power can be transmitted. And the idea is that any connection, any physical wire connected to this huge bar will allow electricity to flow from the power station ultimately into your home. You wouldn't want a million wires coming out of the power station and individually connecting into every every person's home. That would be ridiculous. And so this concept of bus bars is used where you have this terminal and any, any point on that terminal is a live connection. You connect your wire to it and you're gonna be able to draw power. That's exactly what's happening with music. Another nice analogy that I like to think about is the airport terminal. You can have any number of planes coming into the terminal. Those people can mill together and then pass through the terminal to any number of different destinations. In that example, the terminal is the bus. The data or audio or people travel into the terminal, into the bus, and then they can be distributed to any new destination. So here we have our input bus. This is the feed coming from my electric guitar. Now, strictly speaking, the output routing in this setup should be incredibly simple. I only have a single output. This is it, it's called stereo out. And yet when we look in the output tab, you see something that's a little bit confusing. You can see that stereo out is labeled as not connected. This is an artifact of the use of the control room and it's something that I'm not a fan of. It's basically when the control room was designed, because you have to have a stereo output, you have to have a master output coming out of Cubase. When the control room is activated, it takes over control of that. It's what's called a main mix. But you still need the stereo output to be here in order to have your mixer strip. 
in the mix console. And so we're left with this unfortunate situation where we have to have a bus called stereo out, but it's not actually connected to anything. It is in use. You see this little speaker icon? That indicates that this is the default or main mix. I'm using those words again very carefully. This is Cubase's main mix output. It's the master output for Cubase. Let's hop into the control room briefly. We're not going to spend too long there just at the moment. We will come back to it later. But just to show you that in the control room, we have the word main and we have the word mix. If I was to click that button, well, the first thing that would happen is that you would stop hearing me talk, but that would be the primary master output coming out of Cubase. In other words, this thing here. I'll just click it very tempor temporarily while I keep talking. See, I just disappeared. I don't want to deal with the microphone just yet. I'm going to shut that down and we'll come back and deal with it later. But if we ignore that little quirk, the fact that the stereo out is still in use, but it's kind of labeled as not connected, we've created our first end-to-end -end routing. We've created an input bus from our guitar into Cubase and an output bus from Cubase to the outside world. And we can demonstrate that very easily by creating an audio track that connects those buses together. So here on the audio inputs, if I drop this little box down, you can see the various options available to me. And I'm gonna select the guitar input bus. Just as a matter of interest, even though this is a mono input, I always configure my tracks in Cubase as stereo tracks. A stereo track is capable of recording a mono signal with no adverse overhead anybody has ever been able to convince me otherwise. So that's why you'll always see stereo configurations on my output channels, but don't worry about that. Cubase handles the fact that it's a mono signal perfectly well. Now I just click add track. And if we have a look in the inspector on the left hand side, you can see that mono guitar in is the input bus and stereo out is the output bus. And so now I've got my guitar sat over here. I can press record and, rec and record my guitar. Okay, so that's step one complete. I've connected my guitar into Cubase via an input bus. Now I need to hear the output bus be demonstrated by pressing play. So that information is now being transmitted to the stereo out track. You can see the bar there. So even though in the audio connections dialogue, it appears that it's not actually connected, it is. It's connected via the control room. It's just as easy for me to record this microphone signal that I'm talking to you on now. All I need to do is head over to the inspector and change the input bus to the main microphone. Now, ordinarily, you'd expect to have to click monitor in order to be able to hear, see the signal here? But I can, I can record this track perfectly well without monitoring it. I'm still hearing myself. I'm hearing myself through the control room. We'll have a look at that shortly. But just to prove that this is a perfectly live and valid track, as I'm talking to you, you can see that signal being recorded. Live and valid track. There it is. But I can hear myself talk in my headphones as I'm speaking to you. How am I doing that? Let's have a look at the control room. This is a very nice little illustration of various routing issues that I have. I need to get information into Cubase. I need to record this microphone in Cubase. But I also need to get it into OBS, which is sat on my second monitor over here. OBS is the software that I use to record these videos. Well, if you've ever tried to record an audio output from Cubase, you'll know that there's a problem here. The ASIO driver will only connect to one piece of software at a time. If Cubase has control of the ASIO driver, nothing else can see it. In other words, OBS hears complete silence. If I actually pressed record on Cubase with a song to be recorded, or as I'm talking to you now, by default, OBS is completely ignorant that Cubase is even there. The information goes to your speakers, but it doesn't go to the primary output on your audio interface. It's just a weird quirk of ASIO. It took me ages to figure this stuff out. So what I have to do is I have to create something called a loopback system. This is another excellent example of routing. That's why I want to talk to you about it today. So what I do is I take outputs from uh, outputs three and four on my audio interface and feed them back into the audio interface as a completely independent input source. If we have a look back at my studio setup again, you can see that outputs three and four are active and they're physically connected via cables. Jacks come out of sockets on outputs three and four into inputs one and two. 
this main DAW section here. I don't want to see it in Cubase. I have no interest of this in Cubase, but it is an example of routing. This is data being routed out of these two outputs here into inputs one and two. And even though you won't see this in any Focusrite documentation, inputs one and two on the Focusrite um, hardware are different to any other input. They have connections into, uh, into the Windows operating system. In other words, Windows can hear those inputs so it can't, OBS can't hear Cubase, but it can hear inputs one and two on my focus right. And this is routing, this is what it's all about. We need to get the information from one place to another. How do we accomplish that? Well, this particular problem has to be solved with the control room. And we do it by creating one of these things called a queue. You see that I've got this channel here called loopback out Q1. That's called a queue send. So Cubase is basically distributing information to outputs three and four. Here it is, loop back out. So the output from three and four, which is the full signal, everything that Cubase has to offer, critically including the output from the microphone. We'll deal with that in a moment. That's going out of these outputs from three and four. Then it comes back into Cubase in inputs one and two. Now this is just a physical connection. Those jacks are connected into sockets on inputs one and two on my focus right. Cubase does not care doesn't hear them, doesn't see them. I don't even have them configured um, as inputs on my system. They're not visible. It's not something that I would ever actively connect to. They're just passing through the audio interface onto OBS. And this puts in place another piece of the puzzle. And that piece is, where was the microphone input? When we were having a look at the input channels, there was no microphone there. Well, it's the control room that takes care of the microphone. This is another example of routing. One of the features of a queue send is to have this feature called talkback. See this little green button? It says enable talkback to queue channel. You know when the engineer's in the recording studio and they press the button and talk to the singer in the vocal booth? That's a talkback system. Well, talkback is permanently active on this queue channel in the control room. In other words, the microphone is hearing everything that happens. And that's why I don't need to monitor it when I record that information in Cubase. Don't have to have the little monitor light lit up. I can hear me speaking through the microphone right now. It's going through the control room. It's being routed through the control room into this talkback mechanism, out through the queue. And so I have to have the queue active in order to be able to hear me. Let's have a look at another example of routing. Here we have a channel called Hi-Fi Speakers. And you can see that this is connected to outputs one and two. The information coming out of Cubase is routed through the control room to outputs one and two. It then goes to the speakers mounted on my wall and I can turn my amplifier on and hear that. That's a routing. So all of this stuff is configured in the control room. So as you can see, even in this very simple setup, I am one person with one PC, one microphone, one guitar input, and there are still a multitude of routing options available to me. In my particular case, it's because I need to send audio in different directions. I need to record stuff in Cubase and also record it in OBS. That's my routing requirement. And so I've developed a routing solution that helps me do that. The way I'm able to navigate all of these waters is to make sure that everything is labeled. Only the inputs and outputs that I want to see are active and visible. And I'm absolutely fastidious about ensuring that anything that's not necessary or redundant is either disabled or out of the way. Now, having solved those logistical issues, what we're really interested in from this point onwards is recording music. And so over the course of the rest of this series, I'll show you each of the different routing mechanisms we've got in Cubase, group tracks, FX tracks, VCA faders, to allow us to properly configure and really tightly control those various routing options available to us. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much for watching.